Hello. Uh, so uh, this talk is an introduction to the tools available in Buildroot for compliance with the open source licensing. I'm Luca Ceresoli. I love open source, and for my daily job, I design embedded Linux system at IAM Sportline for motorsport applications. Uh, so first thing, uh, let's have a super quick introduction to Buildroot. Uh, Buildroot is an embedded Linux build system. So uh, you want to design an embedded device running Linux on it. You have to put together lots of packages uh, for it to work. And so uh, this is a complex task. And uh, there are tools to help you, which are the build systems. Buildroot is one of them. It takes a lot of packages from, from the sources. It extracts them, patches uh, to, to fix problems, uh, compile them, cross-compile them, and the output product is images that are able to be run on the embedded device. So uh, in the end, what happens is the end user will receive uh, those uh, open source packages in, in a binary form. Um, another thing it produces is host tools, meaning tools that are not really meant to run on the device, but they are natively compiled for the host such as, for example, image creation utilities. Uh, let's have a quick look at how Buildroot works. It is based on two main pillars. One is uh, the make uh, program to actually run the build, but before that you configure it using the kconfig um, configuration system from the Linux kernel. So uh, you can do the usual things uh, like make help. Uh, Buildroot has a list of default configurations for well-known boards, so let's load one configuration. Uh, when it is loaded, you're ready to build, but first we can do make menu config and modify something. We have a lot of parameters to tweak. Let's just have a look at one. We can add packages to be uh, on the target, on the root file system. So we can add an in audio and video application. We can add a test, uh, also test. Uh, in the help, we can see it depends on some other libraries, so it will pull in other dependencies in our build. Let's save and exit, and then we can run the build by simply typing make, so it will start fetching the sources, extracting and building everything. So while it builds, we can go on with um, uh, an, an introduction to uh, open source licensing. Uh, open source uh, doesn't mean you grab something from the internet, you use it, you're, you're okay. Uh, you have rights and obligations with open source. Uh, so uh, most of the open source software falls into two main categories, per, uh, those with a permissive license and those with a copyleft license. Uh, permissive license, including the BSD uh, licenses, MIT, X11, um, allow you to use, re modify, and redistribute the source code, the, 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 redistribute the program, um, and they require you to provide the license text to your users. Um, so uh, in this way, the, the original author is acknowledged. Uh, you can provide it either in a printed manual or in the program output or in the display or somewhere, but you have to provide it. Uh, the other family is the copyleft family, uh, the GPL uh, licenses are the, the most famous representative in this category. Uh, you have pretty much the same rights to use, modify, and redistribute. You also have to provide the license text, but additionally, you have to provide the source code for th the software. If you modified it, you have to provide the modified version. So uh, you have an extra obligation which makes those two family very different. Uh, of course, this is an oversimplification. There are many more details. There are different variations and different versions of each license. And there are licenses that are incompatible with each other. So you have to take care of not using two incompatible packages in the same program. And when looking for a program, you wonder what license it has. Uh, beware, sometimes the uh, websites have incorrect or incomplete information. The only authoritative place for the license text is the source code. So have a look in the source code if you want to be absolutely sure. Even your build system might be wrong, so uh, in that case, you're welcome to send a patch and fix the information in the build system. Uh, so in the practical, uh, in a practical scenario, what do you have to do to be compliant? Uh, first, you have to, as I said, to provide the license text for all of the packages that require it uh, in any form that is suitable. 
but you also should store the uh, source code archives for all the packages. You don't have to provide them beforehand, uh, differently from the license text, but uh, you have to provide a, a written offer to uh, release the source code to anybody who asks. So it's a good idea to have saved them beforehand uh, when you're sure you have them. Uh, by the GNU GPL uh, wording, you have to also include the scripts used to control compilation and installation, which is the make file, CMake list, or configure C, whatever. But if you're using a build system, it is also uh, something that controls the compilation. So um, this is a bit debated, but um, according to at least the official interpretation of the build developers, uh, the build system is included in the scripts you, you should provide. Okay, uh, so um, <clears throat> what does build root offer you to help in this bit complex task? It offers uh, some tools. Uh, in addition to building the images and the host tools, build root also can generate so-called legal info. Uh, these include the license text and the source code that uh, have to be released in some form to the end user and also some additional uh, information and material. Um, and so we can have a look with a simple demo. Uh, the, actually, it's very simple. You just have to run the command make legal info. And so let's have a look. The build has finished. So we have our images here ready. And we can do make legal info. And now Buildroot collects all of the material from all of the packages. Uh, you don't need to have a, a completed a build to run it. You can run it anyway just to investigate what licenses would I use if I, I, I used that package? So uh, the result is in output legal info. Uh, can you read? Can you read the text? OK. Uh, so first, uh, we have a readme file, which tells you this is what I have saved for you uh, with a brief description. It might have warnings uh, to say uh, I was unable to save this and that. Uh, then uh, you have, well, the, the build root, uh, the build root configuration, which has been used to, uh, to run the build. So of course it affects the, the final result. So uh, it, uh, it's something you might want to release for uh, helping uh, reproducing the build. Um, then you have, well, um, something maybe more interesting, uh, the a manifest file. It is a CSV file that, um, basically uh, lists all of the packages with name, version, license, and license files, and also the source archive name and the, the, the website where it has been downloaded from. Finally, it also lists the recursive dependencies. So for, for example, for the package a test, which we enable uh, manually, um, we can see it depends on Alsalib, which is released under these licenses. And it also depends on libev, which has these other licenses. So we can easily check that if, for example, our application depends on a ton of libraries with dependencies. Uh, and we can see if there are incompatible licenses here. There is a similar file saved that called host manifest, which is pretty much the same, but for host packages. Um, so it has exactly the same structure. Uh, then you can look at the uh, licenses directory, which has a subdirectory for each package with the license files containing license text, uh, which is what you should provide to the user. Uh, and also the sources. Uh, also here, a subdirectory for each package with the tarball and any patches that have been applied to the package uh, with the series file. Um, so you have pretty much close to all the material that you need here. Um, and so it makes it easy for you to do the rest. You, you should pro post process that to, to be compliant, but all of the material has been collected here. Okay, uh, that's it. And now um, this is how it works. Uh, Buildroot does no magic to understand what package, uh, what license a package is licensed under. Uh, it would not be quite feasible, uh, but it, uh, it uses a, a, a simple mechanism where the, uh, the package um, maintainer or, or, or the person who writes the package has to uh, insert this info. Uh, let's take the VLC package as an example. Uh, here are two variables, VLC license. Uh, so this is the, the name of the licenses. And uh, in this case, there are two licenses in, for, for different parts of, 
uh, of the software or uh, it, it is dual, dual uh, license. And then VLC license files, so the name of the files that contain that text and that should be uh, copied into the uh, output directory. Uh, there are also hashes for these files so that should the uh, version, the, the, the license change in a future version of the package, the package will not build anymore and so you will notice and maybe it's really a license change and you have to update the, the above fields. Um, you probably have your own proprietary application uh, on top of uh, open source libraries in your embedded device and in this case you, uh, you can uh, handle it by adding license equals proprietary or my company proprietary license whatever and you probably want to set redistribute equal no meaning uh, the uh, source code will not be saved into the output directory, so you do not risk to release your proprietary software accidentally. Okay, um, finally, keep in mind that uh, if you use the override source tier or local site method of buildroot, the source code will not be saved. Uh, those two features are useful when developing uh, your, your software and uh, they are it's okay if you use them, but I would suggest not to use them when releasing, uh, but release with traditional methods because you run the risk to not save some important material that you have to release. Um, okay, uh, finally, well, there is a, a very special case where uh, some packages have a source variable that points to it tarball which does not contain the source code but the but a binary uh, and, and this is this only applies with um, external pre-built tool chains actually so it's a very special corner case but in that case there is a, a, an additional variable actual source that can point to a different tarball which is released at time by the tool chain author where all the source code is you probably don't need that but you should be aware uh, okay uh, so, as you have seen, BuildRoot has a, a tool to help you in license compliance. It does not do everything. For example, it cannot uh, block you from using packages with an undesired license, or uh, it cannot block you if you're using incompatible licenses, but it provides basically the raw, the raw data that you can quite easily use to, you can maybe process that uh, to, uh, to, to check for any issues in your licensing. Um, the, the tool is pretty simple to use, so it, there is really no reason to not use it. Um, okay, there are a few links here if you uh, want additional details on this feature. Uh, the manual uh, has all the details, so you, you can click on those links. Um, everything is well documented in the manual. Um, also, I suggest having a view at the video for this talk by Paul Barker. Uh, it is about license compliance with the Octo, but actually most of the talk is built system agnostic, and so it's a, a more detailed version of what I have said. Uh, about open source licensing in general. Uh, okay, that's all. Uh, we have whoo, almost two minutes. Any question? So I, I, either it was very clear or everybody was sleeping. I'm so, sure it was very clear. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Is there any limitation about the languages used on the... The languages? Yes, if you're going to incorporate other languages rather than... Uh, no, you mean if you have you some... The uh, yeah, the question is, is there any limitation about the, the programming languages used? No, uh, if you have a package using, I don't know, Rust or, or whatever language that is supported by BuildRoot, no problem. Uh, licensing is not really about uh, the technical aspects of programming languages, so it's quite orthogonal. Okay. okay, once again, thank you. Thank you.